All right, here at the computer, <clears throat> we see our test was 45 grams down, but what we really want is 50 grams down. This is key number one, so we have this blue flag showing up, basically telling us, yes, we need to remove some lead from this key. The lead position, the first lead out, is at 114 millimeters. And at that position of that lead, <clears throat> we need to take out 10 grams of lead from the key lead itself right there. The drill out column tells us that for that particular lead, we need to drill down 293 thousandths of an inch, thereby leaving in place 147 thousandths of an inch of lead. Now if this were in a different position, we have 114 there, but what if it was, um, I can just make one up here, what if it was 125? Well now we see instead of 10 grams to come out, it's 9.12 grams of lead to come out, meaning we drill down 268 thousandths and leave 172 thousandths. And on and on it goes. Uh, if the down weight instead of 45 was 47, 47 grams was our test with the gram weights, but we want 50, so we need to remove 5.47 at this lead position, drilling out 161 thousandths and leaving 279. Now I could go on because there's lead 2 and there's lead 3 which I think is outside the camera. Um, and all of these things will come into play uh, depending on where your leads are located, what your downweight test was, and what your downweight desired amount was. So you basically follow the instructions, drill out where it tells you to drill out, and uh, you'll be in good shape. So that's a, a very quick run through. Uh, there are many more things here at this particular site which is probably too small a font for you to see right now but here you can enter your down weight and up weights for all of your notes and the friction will be calculated if the friction is too high it will show up as red flags if it's too low it will show up with green colored cells the balance weight incidentally is also computed from there and there's much more here than I can go into at this point. Very quick run through, but um, it's a very effective program. Okay, here's a little video of working with these calipers. You can get them at uh, Woodworker Supply or on Amazon. They're called eye gauging and they are perfect for this job as you can see they'll give us an outside dimension now this particular key has a lead showing on one side and the other side is blind so we have to use this gauge by setting it like so and then zeroing it out. You won't be able to see me do this on camera, but the idea is you set it like so and then zero it out and then as you reduce the lead this dimension will keep on reducing and you'll be able to read it in the display how much lead you're actually removing. Now if the lead were shown from both sides you would not need to zero it out, we just use them in the ordinary fashion and just keep checking as you drill a little bit of, of lead out each time uh, you run the bit until you get to your target dimension so this is the ticket alright on this um, I'm zeroing it out I'm off screen and there we go so I need to remove about eighty thousandths of an inch uh, of this lead. Where are we? Don't mean to make you dizzy. 
And if you're wondering where I got these really cool gloves, uh, it was Home Depot. All right, here we go. I got 79, so I went just a little bit past it. So I needed 80, I got 79 uh, thousandths removed, and so I'm happy with that. That's going to be um, nice, nice work. Also, it's a nice, clean job. It's the kind of thing that when you put it back in the piano and your customers see it or other piano technicians see it, this is a quality looking job. All right, kids, onward and upwards. Right here is the uh, dial a press from Scott Jones that uh, I used to punch leads out. Now, let's notice something about this key. There are two leads. There's a small one in the the half inch size here. Now, let's look at the small one. On the other side, it's blind. In fact, this large one too also is blind on this side. But if you punch the key out in this direction, you're going to split the wood, for sure, coming out this way. Um, now notice another thing. Many old Steinways have a little dimple, not a dimple, but a little tiny uh, punch hole here, or drill hole, that is the center of the, of the uh, lead that's on the other side. So what I did, since I want to punch the lead out, the large lead out from this side, as I took it over to the drill press and ran a half inch Forstner bit just enough to expose uh, the lead on this side. Now it's an easy matter just to punch this out in the proper direction without splitting the wood uh, on either side. There it goes. So we have a nice a nice clean. Now if I were uh, obviously I'd be punching it out because I don't want it anymore and in order to fill this hole with a nice plug is uh, uh, another video but basically it's a 9 16 inch hole I'll just do what I can to, to center that right over that it's pretty easy to do by eye and drill it all the way through make sure you're backed up on this side and then simply insert the um, poplar wood plugs that come from Piano Tech in there, they'll be a little too wide this way. So uh, glue it in so it's flush on one side, and then the other side you have to trim off with uh, chisels and some careful work at a at a sander. But that's uh, that's for another video. Now something from the drilling video that I want to point out and remind you about was that you heard me tell you that. Uh, you have options as to how you're going to measure this thing and I mentioned that if it's blind on this side you need to zero out the calipers like so and then as you reduce this lead uh, your dimension that you require will show up in the display however if it's exposed from both sides now these are already drilled out so I can still make the point though if it's uh, exposed from both sides then you can set it in the usual way that you would use calipers like this but the dimension you're going, to, you're going to get is what's left in the hole not how much you have taken out of the hole so the program shows you both dimensions how much to leave and how much to drill out however you're doing it um, that you pay attention to do it the same way uh, each time then you won't make uh, a mistake Okay.
You see that the uh, plugs and piano tech are a very nice fit. See, you can push them in and they're just snug enough, but not too snug so that you can insert them by hand. Uh, make sure you orient the grain of the plug with the orientation of the grain, long grain of the key stick itself. Okay, the holes for the plugs have been drilled with a 9 16 inch bit and the plugs fit easily into that hole. Uh, now to trim them, <clears throat> I've tried various things such as band sawing this off, but you have to be very careful that you don't damage the uh, P-top here or the side of the key. It's difficult, always requires sanding. So this is a good way to go. You, you put in a 5 8 inch bit, which is larger than the plug now, and then eyeball the center on it, and the drill down till it's flush. Now, to make sure that the leads that you thinned out through drilling, drilling uh, stay firm, we're going to swedge them. And this is a punch from Piano Tech. It has a flowered end to it and a little dimple in the middle. But you could use in a pinch something like the fat end of a Phillips head screwdriver. But however you do this, the idea is you put it over the punch and take the round end of a ball pane hammer and just hit it a few times. And you can be pretty sure that they're going to stay put as a result of this uh, simple process. Do another one. That's it. Busy work, but uh, easy and fun. All right, on to uh, cosmetics. My favorite way of touching up the black areas of the sharp keys is with this 
uh, shoe polish dauber I think we all used to have these when we were kids but basically uh, you just kind of flood these holes and go around these are the leads that have been uh, partially drilled out as you saw in uh, the other segments and uh, it, it doesn't necessarily cover the the lead as fully as paint might but it does a it does a good job and while you're at it if you see little pieces of the key that need to be touched up you get that too India ink is what this is you can do uh, two coats and then set it aside to dry now here's a plug that I've already darkened but I'm going to give it a little second coat here this is a wood plug and uh, it drinks it drinks in a lot of a lot of stuff so pay attention to what you're doing and you'll have a nice uh, a nice job okay on the other side here this is an old lead here and this is a wood plug here and you can you can be as fussy as you want here but um, obviously you, you need to do something you can't just leave the plugs as is uh, and you can't leave those lead holes um, untouched either so that's that set it aside now on the naturals kind of a simple thing here's a plug now, I don't do anything with the uh, leads on these but I do like to put, at least put a little bit of uh, this is just regular shellac on here it doesn't do much in terms of the color if you're really interested in changing the color so it looks more like the key why then you need to use uh, stain uh, use your eye and come up with a stain that best matches but I do like to at least fill them in with a little something I don't find this lighter color wood as objectionable as if you were to leave the black uh, wooden plugs or what would be uh, should be black co colored plugs if you left them white that would be uh, an issue but that's it of course you know there are many different kinds of things you do with the side of a key they can be sanded and should be these these were recovered of course but there's all sorts of things you might be interested in doing as well to make uh, the, the size of the keys look as new and acceptable uh, as possible so that's the process you don't need to go in here as I mentioned uh, of course you can if you like well okay here we are we've got all our keys drilled out um, wooden plugs installed so how did we do in this section of the scale the uh, down weight was set for um, 52 our target down weight is 52 so here's 52 that looks good and that looks good and this next section here it uh, target is 51 and that looks good and that looks good uh, in this area middle of the scale target is for 50 50 is good and we see that 50 is good and as we graduate upward the target down weights decrease at least uh, that's the way we do it and Steinway does it and many others so 49 would be for here good 49 is good just breaking a little friction by doing that uh, then we get to 48 about in this range here here that looks good 
48 looks good. And then 47 ish, about in this area, looks good. 47, good. So it, it does work, it's very effective. Uh, let's see, we had the 50 here. I don't know what the up weight is, but it's got to be pretty good. There's 25 right away, so we can see we've got really good up weight as well. So, this is going to be uh, very nice to play. Like it when it all comes together so nicely. A lot of work, but uh, if you follow the procedures, it's not difficult.